This recipe is for ginger biscuits. I have 200 grams of plain flour and I'm going to add a raising agent to that because I want my biscuits to rise. So I just need to add half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. Now, if you don't have bicarbonate of soda at home, if you're doing this recipe at school, we'll have bicarbonate of soda, but if you don't have bicarbonate of soda at home, then you can always substitute plain flour. What's important with the bicarb is that you get a measured spoonful. So I'm just going to run the back of a knife over the top of that so it's level because I know that too much bicarbonate of soda will make these taste awful and I don't want to overdo that. So just half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and a full teaspoon of ginger into these and hopefully ginger won't all come out in one go. Now the ginger I am not using the back of a spoon to measure, back of a knife to measure this because I actually like quite a strong flavour in my ginger biscuits. So I'm just going to add just a tiny little bit extra. So these are sieved together so you sieve all your dry ingredients together for this recipe and that just helps to mix the ginger and the bicarb through the flour so that it's even. Just get rid of the last few bits and that's done. The other ingredients that you're going to need for this, three of them are going to be melted together. So in my saucepan I have 75 grams of brown sugar and 50 grams of butter and the last ingredient that needs to go into here is a tablespoon of golden syrup. If you've got the squeezy syrup in the jar it's easier to measure. I've got a tin of syrup at home so what I've done with my tin of syrup is I've put that in some warm water. So I've had my tin of syrup standing in warm water which means that it's gone a little bit runny. Makes it easier for me to put a tablespoon of syrup in here without getting too much extra. If these biscuits become too sweet, they have too much sugar in from the syrup and the um, brown sugar, they can end up being really, really hard and brittle when they come out of the oven. So, a tablespoon of sugar into there. And the last ingredient that I need is one egg. And I'm just going to break my egg into a small measuring jug. It can go into a bowl or a measuring jug. It's not really, doesn't really matter which. And I'm just going to use a fork to lightly beat this and mix this together a little bit. So I have all my ingredients ready to complete my ginger biscuits. I've got the flour, the bicarb and the ginger in a bowl. I have an egg mixed up together and I've got the butter, sugar and syrup in my saucepan. And what I need to do now is melt this together gently over a nice low heat. I've got my saucepan on a nice gentle heat and I'm just stirring to melt the margarine or butter to start with. You can see as soon as the butter starts to melt, the sugar starts to dissolve in the melted butter and the syrup has dissolved, not dissolved, it's got mixed in as well. It's really important with this that you don't allow this mixture to boil. So it really does need to be over a gentle heat and we just need to stir until all of the butter has melted and I don't know if you can hear the difference but when I first started this 
the bottom of the pan sounded really, really grainy and scratchy where I'd got the brown sugar in it. As it's the butter's melting, the sugar is melting into the butter. That's dissolving as well and it's becoming a much smoother mixture. So as soon as my butter has all melted, I'm going to take this back over to my flour mixture. Okay, my brown sugar syrup and margarine is melted, so I'm just going to pour that into my bowl with the flour. I'm just going to make sure that I get all of that mixture out and I'm going to start stirring this a little bit but I haven't stirred it in completely really what I've done is just cover that mixture in a bit of the flour and I'm then going to add my egg what I don't want to do is to pour the egg on top of that hot sugar mixture in case I've got it too hot if you boiled it and you then add it into your bowl and put the egg straight on the top. You could end up cooking the egg rather than getting this into one mixture. So this, as you can see, I'm stirring with the spoon I used on the heat. So I'm not putting my hands in yet because, as I've already said, mentioned, the mixture could be warm from the cooker, but this is all coming together into one dough. There we go. So I've got one gingerbread dough, the same consistency in my bowl. And it does feel a little bit warm, but having incorporated all the ingredients together, mixed them all together, it's not actually that hot. It is a little bit soft at the moment, so I'm just going to leave that for maybe 10 minutes before I try to roll it out. My dough has cooled down a bit and I'm just going to take it out of the bowl. It's still quite soft but that is quite normal with a ginger biscuit dough because it's made by the melting method. So you do need flour on your worktop for this and because I don't want to be working this too much. I'm just going to roll this out half at a time. So this needs to be rolled out. So it's about half a centimetre thick. So roll once, turn it around. It is a very soft dough. So rub your hand in flour if you need to and rub it over the top. But try not to pick this up with one hand while you're moving it. We don't want it to stick to the worktop, but we don't want it to be too thick either. So I'm going to stop about there. And I've got some star cutters, as this is gingerbread. I'm going to cut ginger stars from this. Now I'm going to put these straight onto my greased baking tray. If they don't pick up straight away like that, that's not a problem. Sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't. If you're worried about them sticking, just flour your cutter and then you can get your stars out a bit more easily. I am putting them a reasonable distance apart on the baking tray because these will spread. Like all biscuits they spread, but gingerbread can spread more than others. And I am deliberately doing these in different sizes because I want to show you something, well, it's Christmas, we're coming up to Christmas and I want stars. This tray has medium and small stars on it. I've already got one tray of biscuits in the oven and these go into the oven for eight to 10 minutes. Because I'm doing different sizes, what I wouldn't do 
is put one of the very small stars on this tray because they would take there'd be too much difference in the time they would take to cook but eight to ten minutes and they need to be lightly golden brown around the outside okay the ginger biscuits have been in the oven for eight minutes they're just browning around the outside edges so I'm going to get them off the baking tray and onto a cooling mat and what you need to remember is that your biscuits will be soft when they're hot and they will crisp as they cool down so I'm just going to get these off there and onto the cooling rack to cool down while I cook some more.